Tooth decay is a process we're using, uh, going by the ecological plaque hypothesis now, where we consider dental plaque as a biofilm. A biofilm is an organized, diverse, multi-species microbial community in a polymer matrix. What does all that mean? Well, free-floating germs are not dangerous for us. It's the ones that get organized in a community. They're, they're working together. They're protecting each other. They're um, uh, adding their acid together. They're making an area more acidic. They're driving out the other germs, uh, the, uh, the other bacteria. Uh, Multi-species, we have, what, something over 600 identified um, uh, bacterial species in, in the mouth, but only, what, a couple, couple dozen, maybe, harmful, potentially harmful for us. So uh, it's, it's those particular acid germs that I call it, where they get organized, where they can be a problem. A polymer matrix. What's a polymer matrix? Well, you've got a little string of poppets in your treasure box. You can take those out. This is just an example of what we're talking about. Let's say, snap off two of those. Let's let that represent a disaccharide maltose sugar. Snap off individual poppets. Let's let that represent a glucose sugar molecule or a saccharide, sugar saccharide. So this is one sugar molecule, six carbons. Snap them together, you get 12 carbons. Snap them together and by the way, this is just a straight chain. These can also be, there's other bonding points. We're just using two as an example. You can have branches off of this. So the polymer or polysaccharide, many saccharides, many sugar molecules strung together. That's the kind of matrix we're talking about. These, in, in the mouth, these would be branch. There would be branches coming off of the string. Uh, and it can be huge. It could be enormous. This could be, it could fill the room with these beads. And that would be the the polymer matrix in the biofilm. It's sticky, it'll, it'll hold everything together, it is a protective feature for those harmful acid germs also. And there's competition in this biofilm, the, the bacteria are competing for their space on the teeth. And acidic conditions favor harmful bacterial communities, so the more acid they're getting, the more they're out-competing the other bacterial species. That's why they look for these sheltered little areas where they can hide. It's the acid germs that I call the strep mutans and other types of acid-forming bacteria. Acid germs, they process sugars very efficiently. They process the sugars and make acid. And the more acid they make, the more it favors their own selection. Uh, so it's a vicious cycle. More acid, more acid germs, more acid germs, more acid, and they, and they keep forming their own protected community. So, oh, that's, um, that's the acid germs we're talking about. They're hiding in those little niche areas. They have no respect for you whatsoever. Uh, to them, you're just a piece of meat. And if you give them half a chance, they'll eat you alive. But fortunately, it's not all bad. We also have protective factors. There's damaging and protective factors in sort of a dynamic flux, in a balance. We want to favor the protective remineralization over the destructive demineralization factors. Uh, here's some risk factors for tooth decay, the acidic environment. Uh, some things you might not think of readily, including uh, uh, bottles and sippy cups, uh, putting the baby to, to bed with a, a bottle, even with fruit juice or milk. Uh, can be damaging to the teeth. The sippy cups can be very dangerous because they're getting the sugar introduced all the time, uh, constantly, little, little amounts of sugar being added. Uh, some other things are um, the most important, let, let's go to the most important, frequent between meal snacks of fermentable carbohydrates. Fermentable carbohydrates are starches and sugars, especially sugar. And so it's a matter of bad timing more so than absolute amounts. Uh, if you had just sugar with your meals or the fermentable carbohydrate just at meal time and nothing else during the day, it's not as dangerous as having as, as introducing sm these small amounts of sugars repeatedly in the course of a day. So does size matter? I think it matters at least a little bit. 
uh, maybe not as, as important as the, the frequency of use, but uh, I have to believe that, um, that we're, we're getting a little too much sugar in our diets. And if you have that much available, and you're, you're going to sip on that all day long, right? <laughs> uh, I have here um, a, a big colossal protein bar. Uh, it's a meal replacement bar. It's a high protein. Uh, it looks very good, very healthy. But it does contain 28 grams of sugar. That's uh, how many teaspoons? Seven, right? Did I say four grams per? But seven teaspoons of sugar in this big colossal bar. So you can imagine, you know, just chewing on this all day uh, for energy, of course. Uh, we have these energy drinks today. They're very popular. Uh, they're, uh, they've got a lot of caffeine and a lot of sugar. It helps our young people stay up all night with their computers. And how much sugar would you guess would be in one of these cans? Uh, these are, again, you've got your sugar cubes, um, that's four grams. How many of these sugar cubes do you think are in this one can? Let's start counting them out. Got 18 in there. <laughs> so you can imagine that somebody who really needs a lot of energy because they're working on their computers all day, <laughs> they're eating this, they're drinking this at 4 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> sending a very important message to someone around the world. Uh, that's, that's, not a good, that's not very healthy for our teeth. Maybe it's giving them a lot of energy, but it's not very healthy for our teeth.